Geekom's pitching their A6 mini PC as the best value option out there, and with the gazillion mini PCs currently on the market, that's no small task. Initial impressions are promising, with the same premium aluminium alloy case included as with other Geekom minis. The three year warranty is also intact, which is more than most vendors offer. Even the same accessories are included as the more expensive minis in Geekom's lineup, including a compact power supply and monitor mount, while the port selection doesn't differ much either. So maybe the configuration then? Nope, it's a 1TB SSD 32GB DDR5 combo similar to all the high-end minis out there. That leaves only the CPU, which in this case is AMD's Ryzen 6800H, an older generation 8-core 16-thread part with Radeon 680M graphics. It was a generation where AMD leaped far ahead of Intel on the integrated graphics front. A pretty good choice for a value mini PC. You can find the Geekom A6 on the official website or Amazon for $449. Geekom also provided me with a 5% off coupon to share with all of you, bringing down the price to around $425, which makes it a competitive value option. On the front of the mini are two USB 3 10 gigabit ports along with an audio jack and power button. On the side is a full size SD card reader. Inside the mini is a MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E for wireless and Bluetooth. On the back, two HDMI 2.0 ports, a USB 4 40 gigabit along with a USB-C 10 gigabit. Both support display, but neither support power delivery, so I wasn't able to power the A6 with my USB-C monitor. Also included is Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN, USB 3, 10 gigabit, and USB 2. And now it's time to play Operation and open her up. Geekom's A8 uses the annoying glued on rubber feet, which really isn't necessary when they are already slotted in. Anyway, after not having fun ripping them out, there are four screws to remove, then hoist the lid open. Another four screws for the metal plate, and be careful of the wireless cable. The A6 has an M.2 2242 SATA slot for extra storage, and while the included Gen 4 Kingston NVMe drive is cooled by the metal plate, the crucial DDR5 memory is not, so we'll see how that holds up later. As with every Geekon Mini PC released in the last few years, Windows 11 Pro is included, and a malware scan came back clean. Ubuntu was tested, and it worked without any issues at all. Now let's see how it holds up in the synthetic benchmarks. In single core Cinebench, it's no speed demon. AMD only really started to catch up to Intel with the 7000 series. The result is pretty close to the best 6000 series AMD chips. Multicore performance is better, and increasing the power limit in the BIOS adds a bit of extra performance. The best 6000 series do a bit better, and so does the 6 core 7000 series chip. Geekbench single core again is nothing impressive, with the 7000 series far ahead. Multicore shows little gain for the increased power limit. The A6 does better in video encoding, matching or surpassing the other 6000 series minis tested, and is still around the 7640HS even with the extra cores and threads. With a much longer AV1 encoding test, the A6 drops further down the stack and is less impressive. No AV1 hardware encoding is available on this CPU. As mentioned earlier, the 6000 series introduced AMD's Radeon 680M, which blew away Team Blue at the time. Now, it's become a mid-range iGPU, providing good performance. It's almost identical to the 6900HX in the 3 d Mark DX11 test, and is ahead of the mid-range 7000 series chip by 14%. That margin shrinks to just 3% in DX12 TimeSpy and 11% in DX12 Steel Nomad Lite. So we're looking at similar CPU performance and faster GPU when compared with the 7640HS and slightly behind both the 6900HX and 6950H. If you like esports games, then Geekom's A6 does pretty well in a variety of titles. Stick to 1080p low for most, and you'll get pretty good frame rates. No drama.
Latest AAA games can be a struggle. All are tested without FSR or frame gen. Indiana Jones isn't a great experience, even at low detail. But something older like Baldur's Gate 3 holds up okay. Space Marine 2 is the worst performer and is completely unplayable. God of War Ragnarok holds up better. The USB 4 port allows an eGPU to be connected and I tested it with my eGPU dock to make sure it works fine. Here it is with an RTX 4070 Super. AMD 6800H can also handle a wide variety of emulators. Semu and RC PS3 both play most games at 1080p full speed. The final game test was to leave one running for 30 minutes, this time at 26C ambient temperature to see if the DDR5 RAM would throttle and cause a drastic FPS dip. But it held up okay. Oh, and I did use FSR balance mode for this one to give the GPU a real workout. Latency Mon is used to test the audio latency of the Mini and Cinebench is added in the background to keep it busy. If it doesn't pass the test like in this case, thermal throttling is often the reason. AMD's upper range 6000 series CPUs started to really make 4K editing in Adobe Premiere a relatively smooth experience and that's the same here. While an Intel Mini is recommended if you primarily use it for video editing, this one is a decent choice with a full size SD card reader coming in handy. Ok, let's check out the remaining metrics for Geekom's A6. The included Kingston Gen 4 SSD isn't a speed demon and I didn't expect one for the price. Cooling wise, apart from the metal plate, there's not much else but it manages to stay below thermal throttling level. Bluetooth range is average at 4.8 meters or almost 16 feet. There weren't any problems with wireless when tested at 12 meters or 39 feet with a 5G band. Good to see no issues with both on the A6. Idle power draw is nice and low, coming in at just 7 watts. Maximum power draw is a bit higher than previous 6000 series minis tested, but it is in line with the 8 core minis in the 7000 and 8000 series. While the A6 did run hotter than most minis with a majority of workloads, the maximum wasn't too bad. However, that's because the fan pushes out a lot of hot air and the noise level is on the high side. If you like your mini PCs to be as small as possible, but still with some decent power, then the Geekom A6 takes the top spot as the smallest mini from this lineup. Mashing the delete key on startup lets you access the BIOS. It's great to see Geekom has taken feedback on board and included pretty much everything that has been asked for previously. A new addition with the A6 is the ability to choose the VRAM limit. Great, thanks for listening. So we've looked at a lot of what's on offer with Geekom's A6, now it's time for the conclusion. The price for what you get is pretty good and includes a pristine aluminium alloy case, 3 year warranty, compact power supply and a 1TB SSD 32GB RAM configuration. It's tiny but still has space for an additional storage drive. That being said, I would have liked to see USB-C power delivery support. The DDR5 memory is not actively cooled like on other minis. But unlike other minis, GPU performance didn't drop. Being as small as it is, there's a lot of heat to deal with, so temps on average are higher than larger minis, but the maximum still stayed under 100C. Fan noise under load is higher than average. The last couple of Geekom mini PCs have improved a lot over the previous options, and the A6 is a pretty good choice for the value shopper that still wants some of the higher end features. But if you want to go bigger, better, and pricier, then the Geekom A8 Max might be of interest. Check out that review right here. Cheers!